इनकी जनसंख्या को अगर खत्म करना है तो हम मारने को तैयार है जेल में जाने को तैयार है मैंने कोई बात फिर कही है हिंदू को भी अपनी आत्म रक्षा के लिए अस्त्र उठाना पड़ेगा और कार्रवाई करनी पड़ेगी Hate speech, violence and lynchings against Muslims is on the rise in India. Muslims say that ever since India's PM Narendra Modi and his hardline Hindu Bharatiya Janata Party came to power in 2014, they've been under attack. The BJP denies that they are persecuting Muslims, but there's no doubt that anti-Muslim sentiment is on the rise. But could the violence become so serious it leads to genocide? The founder of Genocide Watch thinks that genocide is impending. We are warning that genocide could very well happen in India. Genocide is defined as killing members of a group, causing serious bodily and mental harm, imposing measures to prevent birth or transferring children from the group, or with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial or religious group. Genocide is a process, not a singular act, because as UN's advisor on genocide today Dr. Ding said, the Holocaust didn't start with gas chambers. It began with hate speech. Dr. Gregory Stanton developed the 10 stages of genocide, a framework to identify the processes leading up to a potential genocide. Are these stages already unfolding in India? Classification refers to creating a distinction between us versus them and creating a division based on race, religion or nationality. The ruling party advocates for Hindutva, an ideology that seeks to define India and Indians by their Hindu values. The very idea of creating a purely Hindu nation promotes division between Hindus, Muslims and other minorities. Names or symbols are used to distinguish between people, and there's a number of examples of this in India. Slogans such as "Jai Shri Ram" or "Victory to Lord Ram" have been weaponized. Hindu mobs often ask Muslims to chant them and then beat them up. If street vendors are identified as Muslim and selling goods in Hindu localities, they are often beaten up. In 2021, a 14-year-old Muslim boy was beaten for entering a temple to drink water. Discrimination occurs when the dominant group uses laws and customs to deny the rights of other groups. One of the most stark examples is the Citizenship Amendment Act. In 2019, the act which offers amnesty to immigrants from neighboring countries as long as they are not Muslim passed. In the same year, India also revoked the constitutional autonomy granted to the only Muslim majority state in the country, Jammu and Kashmir, and imposed restrictions on the internet and freedom of movement with the arbitrary detention of citizens. A number of states have also banned cow slaughter, which has disproportionately impacted minorities. Muslim cattle traders have been prosecuted or BJP affiliated groups have attacked Muslims and Dalits based on rumors that they've killed cows. Politically motivated charges including that of sedition and terrorism are also being leveled at Muslim activists across the country. 18 activists in Delhi protesting the Citizenship Amendment Act had charges under an anti-terror law filed against them. Muslims in India have been dehumanized. In Assam, Muslims have been referred to as Bengalis, pests or infiltrators by Hindu groups and even by government officials. The word jihad has also been weaponized against Muslims. Love jihad is a conspiracy theory which purports that Muslim men lure Hindu women into marriage and conversion. This has led to mob violence and some states enacting anti-conversion laws. Corona jihad is a term that has also been used by hate groups and officials who singled out and accused the Tablighi Jamaat, a Muslim religious group of hosting super spreader events. Muslims are also commonly referred to as extremists and terrorists. Muslim women activists have been demonized and online auctions targeting them have sprung up on the internet. Organization refers to the state supporting or even arming groups of militias while polarization refers to continued hate propaganda. The Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh is a vast all-male Hindu network and has thousands around the country. Modi is a long-time member of the group. The group celebrates Hindu culture but also trains members with weapons. Many of the group members have launched attacks on Muslims. In some parts of the country, there's so much Muslim hate that right-wing Hindu groups are even trying to prevent Muslims from offering Friday prayers. And in other parts, historic mosques are being targeted by groups who believe they should be targeted to temples. Preparation refers to the planning of violence or genocide, which is often cloaked in euphemisms, such as the final solution in Germany. Recently, right-wing groups have been making reference to cauliflower farming, an open call to genocide. Cauliflower farming refers to the 1989 Nogain massacre when 116 Muslims were killed by a 4,000-strong mob led by a police officer. Their bodies were buried and camouflaged by the plantation of cauliflower and cabbage. A recent conference organized by monks in Haridwar went viral on the internet. Many of the leaders made anti-Muslim remarks and called for the killing of Muslims. 
persecution and extermination and denial at the final stages of genocide. Persecution may refer to death lists being drawn up, property being expropriated, and the target group being deprived of resources. Extermination refers to mass killing, while denial refers to the perpetrators denying that a genocide took place. While deadly violence against Muslims has not been carried out on a mass scale since the BJP's rise to power in 2014, it did happen in 2002 in Gujarat when Narendra Modi was the chief minister of the state. In response to reports that Muslims had set a train carriage carrying Hindu pilgrims alight, mobs ravaged the state, looting, raping and burning. More than 2,000 Muslims lost their lives and tens of thousands were displaced. The attacks were carefully planned and a senior police officer and minister now murdered claimed that Modi instructed police not to stand in the way of the killers. Modi denies involvement. Today, it's hard to deny that Muslims are being persecuted across the country. Violence, often carried out by mobs, has already led to the killing of Muslims. In 2019, 53 people were killed in the Delhi riots. An independent investigation by the Delhi Minorities Commission found that the violence was planned and targeted, and some policemen were even involved. How dangerous is it to be Muslim in India right now?